Hey folks, JD here, and I've been asked a question. Well, here it is. It took about a month to get here. <laughs> really incredibly long time, but it doesn't matter. We're gonna do it. We're gonna do it now. Now, this is the Chiasen CX33. This isn't the S, this is just the 33. The S is totally sold out, it is Christmas time. Right, what have we got? So, as you can see, this is slightly a little bit different to the other, other quadcopters. In fact, this isn't a quadcopter, it's a hexacopter. It's a tri-formation hexacopter. So what does that mean? Well, as you can see, we have three propellers here. In fact, we have six, because we have three underneath as well in the same formation of a triangle. Hence tri, and hence hexacopter, hence six. Now, I haven't flown a hexacopter in a long time. The last one, I believe, was the MJX uh, X600, if memory serves. Now. I'm really quite intrigued with this guy. Uh, <laughs> I've often been intrigued with this guy. This guy's been around a long time. But that doesn't mean it's not good. It just means, actually, the exact opposite. It means it's very good. We have a one megapixel camera in the front here, which is capable of a resolution of 1280 by 720. It comes with a two gig SD card, which just fits in the back. Um, now, one thing I do have to mention, man with big hands, Getting into the back here to put the battery in is a nightmare, absolute nightmare. So you will have to take care. What I did was unplug the camera. If I hadn't, I would have ripped the camera straight out of the back. So I just thought I'd mention that anyway. The motor, mo the motor formation is quite unique. We have motors on top of each other. I quite like that. I don't know how it's going to go for, for heat dissipation, uh, but at the same time, these are quite well vented, as you can see. At each side has got vents and the front as well. Also doubles up as LED, so you have LED here and LED here as well in inside the plastic uh, pane. Now, two little landing sprigs on the bottom gives you quite a bit of clearance between the propeller and the landing sprig. What I would recommend is you don't fly this on grass, otherwise grass is going to get stuck inside there and chew up the motor. Okay, let's have a little look at the, at the transmitter. Now, as this isn't the S model, there's no big um, monitor on the top but these are the holes in which you have to attach the monitor to should you have the S version or should you want to buy uh, the monitor as an, additional, um, as, a, as an additional unit. Now, as you can see, it's quite standard, it's quite plain, but that's good. I like standard, I like plain. So you have your left and your right analog sticks here for directional control and acceleration, deceleration. You also have these little buttons at the top here. So you have one for change frequency, you have another to start recording video and taking photos. You have automatic takeoff and automatic automatic landing, as well as mode change one and two either side there as well, as well as your trim buttons going up the top there. Oh, do you know what? Let's just do it. All right, so here we go. This is the Chiasen CX33. Now I just brought her into the mat, and now what we're going to do first of all is turn on the quadcopter. So right underneath you've got a little on and off button. Let's shift that to on, and then let's turn on the transmitter. Simple one up and one down motion to bind. Once you have bound, you will notice that the LEDs on the back of the quadcopter will stop flashing totally. They'll go from a very fast flash to quite a slow flash to a totally solid. That lets you know that you're totally 100% locked in and ready to go. We're just going to calibrate the gyros and then we're going to take her on her maiden voyage. So what I'm going to do is bring every single way that I know how, bring the transmitter in, over to the left, over to the, over to the right, over to the left. <laughs> And now, we should, give it a second, there we go, so as you see the back LEDs will flash letting you know that the gyro is calibrating, and then once those LEDs on the back then go solid, the gyro is totally 100% calibrated. So with that, we're going to push this little button up here, okay, so up we go, oh, I'm just controlling her a little bit, there we go, right, so we're airborne, and this is what she looks like, and she's very loud. But, I don't think that's going to matter that much because she is handling very, very well indeed. All I've done is a couple of turns for the second. Her movements seem very, very, very stable. Okay, let's take her up a little bit higher. Apart from when she, when she climbs altitude, it could be because today is a really cold day. We're in minus figures here. But when she climbs out at altitude, she seems a little bit jerky. <laughs> but she flies around, turns left to right, right to left, banks around, no issues whatsoever. The blue LEDs on the front, extremely bright. The red LED on the back, 
again quite bright as well. Let's have a quick little look at this altitude hold function and let's start some video off. And there we are. So this is her totally, you can see she's feathering up and down slightly but other than that she is pretty stable. So I'm just going to record some video now hopefully. So let's have a quick little look underneath. So there we are. So a little simple click of the video button here and you'll notice underneath the camera is now flashing red. That'll let you know that you are actually recording video. And if you didn't hear that because the quadcopter is very loud, a little simple click of the video button, not a long press and hold, just a simple click. And you will notice that the LED on the underside of the camera is now flashing red. And that'll let you know that you are recording video. If you long press on the button, you will take a photo. Okay, so all in all, seems pretty good. Now don't forget, this is quite an old unit. She's not, uh, she's not that, uh, she's not that up to date. Uh, she has been around for about two, two and a half years. Doesn't mean that she's a bad quadcopter. On the contrary, she's actually handling very, very well indeed. She's spinning around, no issues. All six of those motors are really, really well balanced and powered very, very nicely as well. Oh, I like it. I like it. I don't know if it's the shape. I don't know if it's just because it's quite peculiar. I'm not that hundred. I'm not that sure. It could be because it just flies well, and it just looks very, very nice. <laughs> now, obviously, with these LEDs on the front, you can see them better when you turn, as the LEDs are pointing outwards a little bit more. Let's bring her down a little bit. Right. Okay. So let's see what she's like if I was to hold myself in front. Let's see. Hello. Now she is drifting quite a lot. If I can try and stabilize her a little bit. Hello you. <laughs> See she holds altitude extremely well. Extremely well. She is bobbing a little bit, but that could just be because it is very cold here today. As I say, we are in minus figures. Oh, but so nice. Flies very, very well. Yeah, I like. I like a lot. Okay, let's try this automatic landing because at the time when this feature was on these quadcopters, it was relatively new. Ah, okay, so it drops really quickly and then the motors do turn themselves off after a couple of seconds there. Actually, I quite like that. It drops very fast though, so don't worry, it, it is still in control of itself. <laughs> you haven't got to intervene, just leave it do what it does and then the automatic takeoff, it's very doesn't take off to your standard one meter height i don't think not by the look of it but it does take off and it does go at least i would say half a meter and then you're ready then to take over it and to fly so i'm going to stop this video recording so let's have a little look at the underneath oh and as you can see the leds on the back are flashing red that is the battery so we're just going to i'm just going to bring him in oh there we go and that's it. He landed himself, the LEDs in the back, see them? The red ones, flashing very, very bright indeed. So that lets you know the battery's dead. All right, folks, let's go and take this for a verdict. Okay, so what do I think of the Chias and CX-33? Oh, it, it feels retro, it feels nice. It feels slow <laughs> to take off. It feels slow when it lands and the motors stop spinning, um, but I, I just really like it. I really like it. I don't know if it's its shape because it's quite peculiar. I know it flies very well and I'm really quite surprised. I thought as this is about two, two and a half years old, it was going to be a little bit flaky. Uh, but no, not at all. I think at the time this was quite an expensive quadcopter. So in order, you know, when you did buy this, you were buying quality. And I think that still shows. I like to think that still shows. Um, and above all, I think... Chiasen have done something that no other company have done, as far as I'm aware. Now, if I'm wrong, please tell me. But this tri, this tricopter is just fantastic. It really is good. It's, it's, I, normally when you get a hexacopter, you get them and you'll have all the propellers around the outside. It's nice to have a formation which is totally different and looks unique and stands out. And that's what you get here. Now, the motors are loud, but the motors aren't new. The motors are going to be a couple of year old technology so at the end of the day you are going to be having a quite a loud sound coming from them uh recording video let's have a little look and see what that looks like i'll obviously put a little note down in the ticker there to let me let you know exactly what i think of that uh, of that video
but I really like her. The battery life wasn't very good, looking at about eight minutes of flight. But for that, I think I was recording at least half the time on video. So if I wasn't, I could have probably pushed that battery life to 10 minutes. Charging her takes three hours. Now that is quite a long time, but to be honest with you, it's worth it for the little time you get with this up in the air. It really is good. Automatic takeoff worked really well. Automatic landing worked well. I didn't have to use any trim whatsoever. She just flew remarkably true. Uh, barometer works quite well. Obviously, as I said, we are in minus figures here today, so there was a little bit of feathering, um, but that's to be expected. The propellers worked well. The motors were nicely balanced, so nicely balanced. Now, what, I, what you normally see with a lot of quadcopters is, especially when they have a lot of motors and a lot of propellers, you'll see one side will twitch a little bit more than the other if they're not balanced correctly with these it was totally flat totally straight and it was balanced really really well so what did i think of the transmitter well the transmitter itself is totally basic but that's all you need you don't need anything else you just need the ability to fly and the ability to land and that's it <laughs> and that's exactly what you get from here the transmitter range was really good took her out quite far took her up a little bit as well just to see exactly how she would fare a little bit higher uh, no problems whatsoever, didn't have, didn't once, not once did I feel that I wasn't in control with this. I did feel as if I was in control the whole time. Uh, yeah, so all in all, I really enjoyed it. I really liked it. So thanks ever so much for watching and listening, folks. I've been JD. You've been fantastic as always. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Hello and welcome to all the new subscribers. I hope you're enjoying the channel. So until next time, my friends, happy flying.